Hey, beautiful souls, it's your Buddha Zen, and welcome to this week's Moon Day Mondays, where we talk about the moon's energy and other planetary energies that are impacting us this week. You know, every moment is a choice between unconditional love and the fear of losing conditional love, and knowing how the planet is influencing our human. Our human can make different choices, and we can use this energy for our benefit. So, in addition to talking about moon energies this week, we also have a Virgo new moon, which we'll talk about wishing upon a star with those. Also, Mercury is going to go direct, and eclipses usually influence us like six to eight weeks before they happen, and they're happening like mid to late October. So, we're already feeling it. But now the energies are intensifying for the eclipses. So we'll talk about that and how to make it more smooth of an interaction. So exciting, so much to cover. So let's get into it. All right. Well, we float into this week on the energy of the moon in Leo. But on Wednesday, September 13th at 1.18 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so for the West Coast uh, and uh, other time zones, this may be influencing you late Tuesday night, but we go into Virgo moon. So the Virgo moon, of course, is at her most discriminating and detail-oriented when we're in the Virgo. It's the sign that's most concerned with the fixin' and the fussin', And this does put us in the mood to clean, to scour, to sort, uh, you know, troubleshoot and help others as well. And Virgo is one of the most helpful signs uh, out of a lot of them. It's also the most health conscious, uh, work oriented and duty bound. So those energies will influence. So it's a good time to pay attention to our diet, our hygiene and our daily schedules. And then while we're sitting in that Virgo moon energy, we actually hit a new moon on Thursday, September 14th at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, this is a great time to use new moon wishes. Every new moon, we get 10 wishes where we can use it for whatever we want or for whatever area of our lives. Um, And we can use the new moon energy, you know, up and around it. But the new moon energy is the most powerful within eight hours after we hit the new moon. So you want to make your wishes uh, from 9.40 p.m. Eastern time within eight hours to have them at their most powerful. And if we use the energy of the zodiac sign of Virgo and the themes around that, what it controls, it's even more powerful. So here's a screenshot of the Virgo energy, like my summary, of course, there could be more or less, but this is the ones that really stand out for me. So we talk about the work environment, health, uh, also small animals and pets are ruled by Virgo, the mind, where can you use more consistency, being of service, and it rules over the bowels, the intestines, the digestive health the assimilation of nutrients, and the solar plexus. So using the wishes around any of these is very helpful. Uh, I would keep it one wish. Don't make it like a paragraph long wish. Just boom, boom, bullet point wishes um, and have them specific. And if you approach them in a way of like, um, I'm grateful for assisting me with da 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 da. You know, allowing it to be an attitude of gratitude uh, adds extra zing to those wishes as well. And if you'd like more information about the new moon wishes, I do have a wish upon a star astro reading, which goes into that. Also, it talks about how we can use the full moon. Uh, ending energy to have like a releasing ceremony, how to make the most of those energies. And also you got some birthday wishes as well. And I uh, pull some information for you on when your uh, natal um, birthday is. And then also there you have a second opportunity too. Uh, so you can get like 20 wishes each 
In addition to the new moon wishes each month and the releasing ceremony type of, it's not really wishes as much as it's opportunities to release things. So we can use the most of this energy. And if you want to check it out right now, they're 50% off for the rest of 2023. They were $10 each. Now they're just five bucks. So if you're interested, uh, check out the link down below in the description box of the video. We flow into Libra moon energy on Friday, September 15th at 1.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the Libra moon is the most oriented towards relationships and partnerships. And uh, Libra's job is, you know, of course, to restore balance. However, we can find ourselves in situations of emotional imbalance that just require a little delicate tap of the scales to set them right. And so in general, this energy is social. It is polite. It's a friendly time. And uh, others may be more cooperative and may agree more easily to compromise. So use this Libra Moon energy in a, in a positive, uh, helpful way, right? And a Libra Moon prompts us to make our surroundings beautiful and surround ourselves by beauty. Uh, it's a great time to decorate then and shop for a home or visit places of elegant beauty. Also, later on the day on Friday, Mercury goes direct. Woohoo! <laughs> so, around 4.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mercury comes out of its retrograde and it starts to move back forward slowly. So, it was in pre-shadow from August 14th. Uh, up until the went retrograde from August 23rd through uh, September 14th. And then it'll be in its post shadow until September 30th. So if you want to know more about the retrogrades, if you check out last week's video, I went more deeply into those. And I'm going to have a video in the future specifically around retrogrades and why they happen, how often they happen, and some great information just to understand what are these things. But retrogrades are not evil. Uh, you know, when the tide is coming in, we take time to reflect, repair our nets, do things, and then we get ready when planet goes direct to move forward on it. So this post-shadow period up until September 30th is a good time to reflect on how had we been communicating with others and uh, people communicating with us, and how in the future do we want to alter that and communicate differently? And then for you West Coasters, uh, we go into the Scorpio moon late, late Sunday night. For those of you on the East Coast at 1258 a.m., Eastern Standard Time is when the Scorpio moon makes its presence known. It is one of the most intense signs in the zodiac. And when the moon is uh, in her energy, she feels everything to the nth degree. And needless to say, we do too, along with that, because we're influenced by the moon. So there could be passion and joy and jealousy and betrayal and love and desire, blah, 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 right? All of that can take center stage in our lives. And as our emotions deepen, they can also reach the point of possible obsession. So be aware of that. Be careful of a tendency to become secretive ourselves or suspicious of others. Or we can brood over an offense that was not intended um, as well. So now is a great time to use this kind of energy of investigation and mystery to do research dig into things, both figuratively and literally, and allow ourselves to become more intimate with someone. Speaking of intensity, we've got the solar and lunar eclipses happening in the middle and end of October coming up. Now, not everyone's going to be able to see, of course, the, the um, impacts of the eclipses, uh, depending on where you're at in the world. So check out the internet and see when they start for you and when they end. The solar eclipse is on Saturday, October 14th in the Libra new moon. And the lunar eclipse is on Saturday, October 28th with the Taurus full moon. So I mentioned in the intro, 
eclipses, we start to pick up on their energies six to eight weeks before it. So we're already feeling the little influence of this, but it becomes even more intense four to six weeks before, whereas where we're at now. And that's why I wanted to bring in the energy, talk a little bit more about these. So let's talk about the solar eclipse first with the Libra new moon. As it says here, solar eclipses bring new chapters with that new moon, new stories, new openings, new beginnings, and whatever sign it is in is how it influences us. So if you are a Libra, if we have any planets in Libra or anything in the seventh house, which is ruled with by Libra as well, um, we might feel these things even more intense, have more new beginnings and have the impact uh, in there as well. So Libra energy, like we're seeing here, is about romance and new friends or contacts. So you can see here, how are you relating to people? Are you, is there codependent tendencies, people pleasing going on? Uh, or, you know, are we striving for independence or interdependence? And then also a big bullet point for Libra is partnering with others to help you. And that can be other practitioners, professionals, or experts. And then helping others with your gifts and developing a client base is also rooted in the Libra energy, making your surroundings pleasant for you. So, you know, the interior, exterior designs, the fine art, the decoration, is it time to pamper yourself and allow yourself to enjoy luxury? It could also be, of course, Libra legal issues and justice. So some positive things can happen there if we focus our energy on the positive, as I also talked at the beginning of the video, whatever we focus on grows and expands, right? Every moment is a choice of unconditional love or fear. And if I'm fearing legal issues, hello, if I'm gra having gratitude towards justice and legal issues and outcomes, then yay, positive things, right? And then we talked about balance, bringing in peace and harmony. Uh, Libra, of course, being an air sign, can have some mental battles. Are we overthinking? Is there indecision? Uh, are we in conflict or in debates? <laughs> and the Libra energy rolls over the adrenal glands, the buttocks, diabetes, sugar levels, and kidneys. So if we can focus our energy on these, and we'll talk about here in some advice on how can we deal with all these energies as well. But let's get talking about the lunar eclipse as well. So, of course, looking at the pictures, you know, the solar eclipse is when the moon is in between the sun and the earth, which casts uh, the moon then casts a shadow in specific places upon the earth, right? But the lunar eclipse is when the earth is in between the sun and the moon and the shadow of the earth uh, kind of covers over and, and turns the moon red or dark, um, you know, darker. So that is going to be in the Taurus energy, and the, as it mentions here in the, the uh, slide here, lunar eclipses bring major attention, fruition, and accomplishment, and dramatic, often non-negotiable endings. So the new moon energy is about beginnings and growth, and the full moon energy is about things falling away, things coming to fruition, and then ending. It's like, you know, the solar eclipse is more spring and summer energy and the lunar eclipse is more fall and winter energy. But with the Taurus full moon, let's take a look at those energies. So as I mentioned with the Libra, with the new moon, with the full moon, if you're a Taurus, you're going to feel this in more extreme. Uh, also, if you have any planets in Taurus or anything in the second house, any planets, those will also be extra influenced in different ways. So looking at the Taurus energy, we actually have a couple slides for Taurus. Do you feel grounded and secure? And I'll let you read the little black print at your leisure. Uh, what is the source of your confidence? It's about perseverance, finances, and abundance. The ability to stand alone in life and heart. And how can you allow your creativity to flow? And then we look at also feelings of dependency, codependency, independence. 
And are you in a rush to reach the end, or possibly holding back and taking a leap because you're anxious? Taurus about eating and cooking. There's also emotions and senses. Taurus being ruled by Venus. And are you being the resistant, stubborn Taurus bull, or embodying that energy? Uh, it does rule over the neck. The throat, the voice, the vocal cords, and the thyroid too. So we talked about the Libra energy and the Taurus energy. Now let's go. Okay, we I see all this stuff happening, but what do I do? How do I get through this uh, in a less impactful way? Well, let's take a look. I didn't realize how much eclipses actually impact our lives until I studied astrology a little bit and experienced it in my own life. And as it says here on the, the slide, it says eclipses often awaken us to a deeper understanding of our lessons, our purpose, and our destiny. Uh, if you haven't looked at your birth chart, and you saw the North Node mentioned, or if you have noticed it, and you're like, what the heck is the North Node? <laughs> and a lot of times the South Node isn't mentioned. But the lunar nodes are more calculations of the moon in relationship to the sun's orbit um, and the impact of the Earth. So it's I won't go into details with that because that'll be confusing. Maybe one of these days I'll talk about North and South Nodes um, as a separate video. But for now, just know that the south node is on the opposite side of the north node. So if you see your north node on your chart, just go directly all the way across. Take a ruler and go all the way straight across to the other side of the, the birth chart wheel. And that's where your south node will be. But the south node is more of what we bring into this life, what our challenges are. It's the lower vibrational energy, the lower spectrum of whatever sign our south node is in. And our north node, that is like what the highest expression of our human character can be here. So it's like the south node is what we come in with our challenges and uh, the things that we can transform. And the north node is the things that we can raise our life to be. So the minimum experience and highest experience. So it's really deep diving into our soul and all of this Akashic record stuff that's in our subconscious. All of this is what the eclipses interact with. And that's why eclipses tend to be so intense. And of course, I don't want to tell you all this and say, good luck. I want to be helpful. That's why I tell you all these things, right? So that we can be aware of it and we can make the best of it. So to make the most of the eclipse season and have the smoothest time, here are some hints, some things that we can do. Uh, first of all, use techniques and other tools that soothe your anxiety. No one knows you better than you know yourself, so you know those things that make you feel calm, whether it's painting, going for a walk, a hot bath, working out, um, sleeping, napping, a nice cup of coffee, reading a book, whatever it may be, you know the tools to help soothe your anxiety. So do a lot of those things. Then it says, hit your inner work really hard and, pra and proactively before things get too intense. So, uh, you know, understanding your north and your south node um, are important. And that's where our work, our inner work and our subconscious, our shadow work can be done. So the more we're doing that, the less the e eclipses impact us because we're already dealing with it. It's like, it's like uh, I don't know, a parent coming home and busting into your room when you're a child going, you better be doing your, oh, you are doing your homework. Okay, good. Oh, good boy. Good girl. You know, <laughs> instead of like, why aren't you doing your homework? You are grounded. Uh, so that's the kind of energy with that. <laughs> and then uh, the third bullet says, develop your neutral witness. And this is about stepping back and realizing that life just is. Uh, whatever is happening just is not having the judgments, not having the contrast. And that's when we go into the human side of us, the fearful side of us that wants to contrast, it wants to compare, it needs to judge. Is this right or is this wrong? Is this good or bad? I need to know because I need to know if I'm lovable, if I need to know if I'm acceptable. So as we develop our neutral witness, where we don't, well, it's like taking away all the adjectives out of stuff like um, this day, uh, was bad. No, this day was. 
You know, that situation was horrible. That situation was. Get rid of the adjectives and just say, this just was. I don't need to have anything attached to it. So it's a wonderful way, and maybe we'll spend some time here. Um, and I probably talked about that in my U Times 2 video series, and I mentioned a little bit around this in my weekly Take 10 with uh, Zens as well. So check out those playlists. They're linked at the end of this video if you want to get some more free information. And then leave room for big changes. So allow the space for change. Um, you know, let go of that expectation that nothing's going to change and just prepare. Just embrace your little inner child and go, close your eyes. We're about to go through some changes and it's okay. I'm here with you. Reinforce the safety feeling, the trust that everything unfolds for us feelings and allow room for changes, knowing that everything always happens for us. And then focus on acceptance instead of trying to swim against the stream, <laughs> trying to control the river, jump on an inner tube, just flow with it and go with it. And just, uh, it's kind of like leaving room with big changes. You just realize that when things change in our life, they're not happening to us. We're not being punished. Things are always happening for us. And we're always moving in a beautiful direction um, that our higher self wanted and that our spiritual posse is helping make happen. And then prioritize forgiveness. Oh, I know that forgiveness word. That's the true F word, right? <laughs> but I, one of the beautiful analogies I've heard or explanations of forgiveness is about releasing our wrath. It's not like we're forgiving the, the action and we're not saying that it is uh, acceptable. Um, what we're saying is that I'm releasing my wrath from you, understanding that, you know, when people do things that are stupid and unloving and unkind, it's usually because they're in fear. Like when you swim out to rescue someone who's drowning and they smack you upside your head because they're, you know, panicking and they grab onto you and pull you under the water. They're not trying to hurt you or kill you. They're just freaking out. So when we realize that, we release people from the wrath and we pour out that pain and we, we choose to stop being a vessel of pain because of someone else's actions or non-actions, words or non-words. And when we pour out that pain, we're able to become a vessel of love. So when we look at the forgiveness and the benefits of forgiveness over our lives and releasing other people too, um, it can be life-changing and it helps because all that stuff is part of what the eclipses are bringing up for our attention too. And then lastly, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with prioritizing forgiveness is putting on the proverbial shoe on the other foot. And, and it helps when we look at other people's lives and when we assume someone is supposed to act a certain way and they don't um, because they're in fear, when we understand where they came from, why they were doing what they were doing, we're like, wow, I had no idea they were so abused when they were young or that they just lost their spouse and children. You know, we, there's all this stuff that we don't know what someone's going through in life. And so when we release this um, and understand that and stand in their shoes and, and maybe ask questions, it also helps us with the releasing of the intensity of this instead of resisting going, no, I will not forgive. Uh, the intensity gets brighter and brighter and brighter, right? They're like, well, here, let's just take you to a higher level of feeling this and seeing the impact on your life so you can release it. Again, not as punishment, but knowing that this is for your best. It's like drinking poison and expecting it to hurt someone else. It's only toxic to our own selves. So hopefully... All this information with the eclipse season is helpful and will help lighten the burden and the intensity uh, of the eclipse season. And we will fill it for six to eight weeks after those dates, too. So just be aware it's like uh, eclipses are almost like a four month uh, little roller coaster ride of enjoyment and learning. All right, everybody. So that is it. I know. Woof. 
what a week it's going to be. Exciting, exciting. So a lot of tools to help us uh, transform the energies and make it the most amazing moment by moment experience that we can. If you guys have any other things that you'd like me to cover in these videos, comment down below or share how the moon and the eclipses and the Mercury direct and all those things, how it influences you. I always love to hear the stories. So until next week, just know every second of every day of your life that you, yes, you are unconditionally loved by the mother and the father of all things, our creator. And of course, I love you too. So until I see you again, much love to you. You hang in there and you take care.